This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV 24-7. You're watching Truth vs. Hype. Bar prices went up in Delhi, prompting the usual protests, leading us somewhat rashly to jump into the debate of whether in fact bar prices are too high and, as some allege, private distribution companies are making crores of profits. Or, as these companies claim, they're actually running into crores of loss and bar prices are too low. This, as I said, was a rash decision because of all the subjects we've tackled on this show. This one is highly technical and almost exasperatingly complex. Before we begin, some could ask why focus entirely on Delhi? The answer I suppose to that is that what we're witnessing in Delhi is representative of the flare-ups over power pricing that we're seeing in other major Indian cities. And so Delhi in some way sums up the mess that is power pricing in India today. A power price hike in Delhi and the familiar reaction and the by now familiar allegations. Yeah, but the tariffs are much higher than the price at which they are buying power. You see, what they are claiming is that they are spending uh, uh, considerable sums uh, or a, a considerable percentage on operations and maintenance costs. This is fudged. They are saying that they are having considerable uh, transmission and commercial losses. This is fudged. They are saying that they are having losses in short term sales and purchases of electricity. This is also fudged. It's a fall from grace for private companies who from the time they took over in 2002 were meant to clean up the mess that was power in Delhi. 2002 uh, the situation was very bad mm -hmm. uh, in the sense there was about six to eight hours of power cut in Delhi. Mm -hmm. Every house virtually had a small DG set. There were huge losses no, at that time. The the uh, uh, I, I think uh, the, at that time uh, government was paying a subsidy of about uh, uh, 1200 to 1400 crores every year which was not really a subsidy to the consumers but it was more the losses which was being incurred by the discom at that time. Right. So what went wrong? To get to the bottom of it, we spent some time at their offices, at Anil Ambani's Reliance Power, which covers two-thirds of Delhi, and with the Tatas, who cover the rest. Coming away with a jumble of spreadsheets, PowerPoint presentations, and a lot of jargon. So one of the tough things to establish whether these companies make a profit or loss is about how power is actually priced. It's a pretty complex process. Now these discoms buy their power from NTPC and other power suppliers. That's a fixed cost. So let's say it's about 5 rupees a unit. Now onto that these companies will load their own costs. So in the case of Tata's, they have their own formula, which is it's a... Uh, 14% is their operation and maintenance cost which they load, 7% depreciation and then 5% is a component of their return on investment which we'll come to in a second. Uh, with Reliance, they have a 10% operation and maintenance cost and a 10% financial cost uh, that they load on to the price of power. Now I'm joined by um, Mr. V.K. Mittal, who is a technical consultant, as it were, to the Aam Aadmi Party, who studied this issue. It's a fairly complicated thing, isn't it, for the regulator to actually go into each of these criteria, these factors that these companies have loaded on to the price of power to figure out what is right or wrong. It is a fairly complex process. It's a complex process. Yeah. And, and it requires a lot of diligence by him, by the regulator, if he really needs to go into each of these claims. Yes. When we apply this formula to the first five years, power tariffs heavily subsidized by the Delhi government were low and the companies did well. So let's look at those early years. Now in those early years things were relatively better, is it? Yeah. So and those, let's look at so sort of from year one, year two, you're getting power at 1 rupees 52 a unit, 1 rupees 56 and you're selling it at around 4 rupees a unit. Yes. This is, this, is a, this is a good margin, a huge differential. But uh, what one needs to look at is that while we were getting at 152, 53% of it was not even being 
metered and billed, even with the 53% loss, there's still a profit margin there. Uh, uh, yes, so the, 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 uh, this is a business which is a regulated business uh, where you get a return on equity or return on capital employed. Uh. Reliance, for reasons best known to them, chose not to give an on-camera interview saying in a statement that for the first five years we were making profits as dictated by the transfer agreement. Uh, the other thing, uh, sir, I wanted to ask you about is that when again we come to this question of profit and that's again something that the viewers need to understand is that they don't directly define it as profit because as per the agreement that's been signed with them what they're guaranteed is a 16% return on their investment which means in a given year suppose they've invested let's say 100 crores then they will get 16% of that which is 16 crores so let's say the total profit for that year was 500 crores so they will get 16 crores from this now the other thing that you were told by them and you know even this money has to be shared because yes I'll come to the sharing in a second what they told us is that you get your 16% on investment also if you meet your target for reducing losses, then you get another chunk of this. So that's a incentive for exceeding the target. Yeah, for exceeding target. In the case of the Tatas, their books reflect the fact that they made profits for the first five years. So what were your profits in these initial years, uh, roughly? Uh, roughly, they would have been 100 crores or 50 crores, 70 crores, in yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, which was basically in the 16% the return on equity that we get. And there was something more also, if we achieved a AT and C target, uh, more than what was uh, allowed by the regulatory commission. As you kept reducing losses, yes, you were rewarded for that. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And right. that also added to your profits. Absolutely right. But with Reliance, it's confusing. They claim they were making profits, but results show losses for the first two years. To this, Reliance says there were some deferred tax revenues in the first five years. We were operating in challenged areas like Trans Yamuna and West Delhi. But the Tatas deny that the neighborhoods they are servicing part to are in any way less tough than the areas that Reliance covers. In our area there are some 220 or the uh, JJ colonies or slums we have. Uh, nearly 1,60,000 consumers are there. Okay. Uh, 10 lakh people stay over there. So, so the suggestion that you did better because you had some kind of a better social mix or consumer base is not necessarily true. What you're saying is that you did better because you invested more in equipment, you brought in technology, you just ran a tighter ship. Uh, Absolutely right. And our workforce was very engaged and very committed. Okay. And they really worked hard to bring down the losses. Both companies agree on this, that the real crisis and which forms the basis of the current problem began 2008 onwards, when heavy state government subsidies were withdrawn and power prices started to rise faster. Yet, the head of the Delhi Electrical Regulatory Commission, Brajinder Singh, refused to raise tariffs for five years on the trot. His reasoning, outlined in this draft order, based on a Price Waterhouse Cooper audit, has formed the crux of the charges against private companies. Then DRC chairman Mr. Brajender Singh, when he uh, did one independent audit of the accounts of these discoms, he found that there was enormous fudging in their purchases of equipment. They were purchasing equipment from their sister companies at highly inflated prices. This is a reference to BSES buying equipment allegedly overpriced from sister concern Reliance Energy Limited which gave REL a very high 70% profit. To this, Reliance says these are baseless charges. The matter is sub judice. The other complaint of the discounts that the then DERC chief Bajinder Singh dismissed was losses on account of surplus power. Every year, the discounts are committed to buying a certain amount of power based on Delhi's peak demand. But when that demand falls, they are left with a balance, which then they have to sell onwards 
on the cheap. Is the cost of the private companies accept that they did make profits selling surplus power, but it was for only a very small window during the time of the 2009 elections. Because of the elections at that time, 2009 elections, 2009 and 10, there were state elections, so parliament and state elections. So the state governments are buying shorter power at a higher rate. Absolutely, that was around. Yes, 2009, 9 and 10. Okay. But unfortunately, now after the elections, the states, the scums, were in very bad financial condition. They didn't have money to buy power. Though there was a need for power, and what they did is they did not buy power, and the excess power. Which one sells typically through the exchange? The prices crashed and it came down to less than three rupees. Today, the companies say they are vindicated because the DERC subsequently accepted their claim that in those five years when prices weren't raised, they ran up crores of losses. BSES says that they have what are known as regulatory assets of rupees ten thousand crores accepted by the regulator himself. So then you accepted. Their contention, then the contention of these distribution companies, that they have huge, what are known as regulatory assets, which is really a complicated way of describing loss, isn't it? See, what loss is? So just just to understand, is that basically regulatory assets is yeah, loss? Yeah, did loss. Yeah. Now it's basically like saying, look, we know you made a loss because of a decision we took, so we are going to put it aside for you, like a any future, any yeah, like a fixed deposit, and you can. In future, we will allow you to claim it. But you know, some people have challenged that the fact that you've accepted that amount. They say that you've not done the due diligence and you've just blindly accepted whatever these companies See, whatever, have told you. Whatever we orders we pass, those are first of all very transparent orders. And after due consultation, how, how do you audit their, their books to know that? They have actually made. See, for example, as as I've been telling you, the auditor. Yeah, we have got experts, chartered accountants, otherwise in our staff also, and then we engage consultants who also have experts and chartered accountants, other other experts in their team, and they do all the due diligence. So this too, the AAP has an answer that Brijinder Singh was replaced by a less problematic DERC chief, Sudhakar. By and large, we have found that these regulatory authorities, because they are appointed by the government and very often they are complicit with monopoly service providers and because uh, enormous uh, sums depend upon what the regulatory authority allows them or does not allow them and therefore uh, there is a huge incentive to influence the regulatory authority and by and large we have found that they have been influenced. You see, it is just a delegation and uh, when we brought Burendra Singh or anybody, there is a committee uh, which, uh, which works in selection process. And that committee is totally independent of the government. Chief Shakti is there. Then uh, people from the CERC, Central Electricity Regulatory Commission, they are there. And there are two eminent uh, people uh, who, who know the power sector. Companies were facing As of the past two years with a change of guard at the DERC, tariffs have started going up. As the price of the sale of power hit around 5.6 rupees a unit, the DERC agreed to push up the price of Delhi to rupees 7.8 a unit, one of the highest in the country. So the Tatas at least are pleased. So this is good, and uh, I'll tell you that out of 7.89, today nearly 60 to 70 paisa is the interest cost and the loan repayment cost for the assets or the. IOU which was created. Okay. So if that would not have been there, this tariff even at 730 would have been a good tariff. Okay. So today what we are looking at is so that tariff, tariff allows you to settle your interest costs on your regulatory asset slash loss. Yes. It allows you to service that interest. Absolutely right. And it is cost reflective. Reliance claims that's still not good enough. They say if we add all our costs, losses, operating costs, interest, return on investment, the par tariff really should have been rupees eight a unit or more. They always make some claims and uh, uh, which is we find not justified. We don't accept it. I mean, they wanted a you hiked by eight percent. Yeah, they yeah. wanted a hike of how much? They had shown a deficit of twenty percent. 
So they wanted the prices to be increased by 20%. Yeah, but we, we felt that what the claims they had made, so we had not fully accepted it. it. To 8%. So we, we found that 8% will suffice and that will meet their requirements. What so people in Delhi want to know is because now you've accepted that there's this huge debt mountain and that essentially the people of the city will have to pay it back. So what does that mean? That means the price is going to keep going up now? No, we have made a roadmap for the liquidation of this uh, accumulated loss. How? So this 8% uh, will take care of uh, not only the current costs etc. and the su proper supply and demand but it will also uh, liquidate the past uh, in a uh, slow manner in the spread over the next 5-6 years. In next 5-6 years? Yes. With this 8% so uh, you are saying this that the of that will come down? Yeah. yeah. The fact is that it's really the CAG audit that will hopefully give us the clearer picture of whether these companies made crores of losses or crores of profit. Uh, we are not against CAG audit. In fact, uh, uh, while the matter is before court and sub judice, as far as uh, our audit is concerned, we get audited done every year whether it is uh, the statutory audit or the internal audit. So why not the CAG? Uh, we are actually going ahead with the CAG audit. We have given them all documents. The challenge is going ahead. You are cooperating. Yeah, we are with cooperating the with them. We have given them all documents which are there for the last five, six years. 100% compliance has been done. Coming up, will adapting the London model help Delhi reduce prices? Welcome back. In this urban village in the heart of South Delhi, the mixed legacy of a decade of private power. The bad old days of power cuts reduced. Basically, time there were a lot of difficulties that have been reduced after privatization. No, it's not just that. It's that time there was a lot of money being spent. Every day, four hundred thousand rupees were spent. Every day, there was a lot of money being spent. Every day, there was a lot of money being spent. Every day, there was a lot of money being spent. Every day, there was a lot of money being spent. ठीक है अभी कितना पावर कट हो रहा है अभी तो इस मंथ इसके पिछले दो तीन महीने में पावर कट हुआ इससे पहले नहीं हो रहा इसमें बिल्कुल ठीक था लेकिन बहुत टाइम पहले दो सौ का तक ज्यादा कट होती थी बट कंसर्न ओवर हाई प्राइसेज रिलेन अब ये भी रेगुलर थी बिजली लेकिन अब बिजली बहुत ज्यादा है सबसे भी वेट आती इतना बिल आ रहा पहला मेरा टू सेवन टू थ्री हंड्रेड की भी खाता है अब इसमें तो थाउजेंड तक आ गया है और सेवन हंड्रेड तक आता है देर इज अ केस टू बी मेड फॉर स्ट्रॉग और मोर ट्रांसपेरेंट अकाउंटिंग प्रोसीजर्स एंड लेस कॉम्प्लिकेटेड वेज ऑफ डिटर्मिनिंग प्राइस कॉस्ट ऑल्सो फॉर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कंपनीज टू इन्वेस्ट मोर इन इंक्लूडिंग एक्सेस टू इलेक्ट्रिसिटी स्पेशली फॉर इट्स पोरेस्ट कंज्यूमर्स बट द क्वेश्चन इज विल इट प्रिंट डाउन प्राइसेज One solution is to follow the model of cities in the West, like London, where consumers have greater choice. In cities like London, and in fact across the UK, the situation is quite different. Companies that supply power and companies that distribute power are different from one another, and that's why they are able to offer customers the best rates. If customers aren't happy with these rates, they can go with other companies. In India, this model has been tried out only in Mumbai. Where power is supplied by Tata's Reliance and the state-run BEST, but consumers can choose whichever one they prefer, regardless of where they live. This has happened uh, last couple of years, and uh, uh, this is basically to give a choice to the consumer of using the service provider who they feel comfortable with, and uh, and for the technology to make this happen, uh, is it a Rocket science has it meant a lot of changes in the Bombay setup, or it's it's all just using the existing setup? It's mostly using the existing setup, excepting that people will have to go for new meters of the whoever is the supplier and okay. whoever is the last mile supplier for that. Some say it's not enough just to focus on distribution companies, but the entire chain of power supply. We have been seeing for last two years that if we have to contain these prices, yeah, the fuel supplier, that's a coal, India, yes, the some generating companies, right, transmission companies and distribution companies, yeah, all these four have to be very closely looked at. That's that's an important point actually to make that one also needs to look at the cost at which raw power is being sold to Delhi, which is. On the fairly high side compared to other states, so one needs to look at the entire chain if you really want to try and control prices at the consumer end. But 
Indian elections are Delhi are on the horizon and power pricing, always political, has already become a flashpoint. That may make sensible debate and measured action difficult. Shivasan, I will not go by what is the political view of the party. I will give you, no, the, I will give you the independent perspective. This is something which I have been seeing all along. Yeah. The fact is that truth is somewhere in the middle. Hmm. The loss or so-called profit or whatever it is is not what is being claimed by these, by these companies or by the Ahmadmi party.